Well, my name's Rod Pinder and I'm a principal at Fitzpatrick and Partners. Um, our firm's been around for about 10, 15 years, uh, focusing mostly on commercial uh, and entertainment projects. Fitzpatrick and Partners have been interested in massive timbers for quite a few years now, um, mostly led through James Fitzpatrick, uh, who's done a number of study tours to Europe and we've been doing a lot of research in-house over the years on massive timbers. Uh, we actually have a separate R&D department in our company dedicated to that. Um, and on the back of that, we've been looking at it on numerous projects, um, pre pre predominantly commercial projects. A lot of the, the technologies that we use to build at the moment, steel and concrete obviously, post-tension concrete, jump form, um, core structures, etc. Um, it's tried and tested technology and it's been around for a long time. Um, but the construction industry and the environment that we find ourselves in at the moment is very different. Uh, there's a lot of challenges on site uh, for contractors. Uh, people want buildings built in shorter time frames uh, for lower cost. There's a lot of occupational and health uh, requirements that go on top of that. Um, so it's a very challenging environment that we build in at the moment. Um, and I think the result of that is that the quality of construction we find is, is very much on a downward trend. Um, buildings are being built cheaper, they're, building, uh, they're being built quicker, uh, and the end result is that quality is being lost. And we see timber as being a very smart system and a new system that can start to deal with some of those challenges because it can be built very quickly, it can be built to very fine tolerances and in a very high quality way, uh, provides fantastic environments for the inha inhabitants of the building um, and of course it's very sustainable. So it's starting to tick a lot of those boxes and that's why we're so excited about timber. So the Macquarie Park project's an interesting one for us. Um, it's a completely prefabricated structure, it's a hybrid steel and timber structure. Um, so all of the steel components uh, are identical in the building, so all of the columns and the beams are all the same all the way through the building so that each one can be fabricated uh, and replicated very easily around the site. And then it's based on a timber cassette system um, which slots into that steel structure. Uh, it's a 9 metre by 9 metre grid. Uh, the cassettes span 2.5 metres each um, and those cassettes are very lightweight, all manufactured off site to fairly precise tolerances. Uh, and makes the erection of the building very, very quick. So there's a lot of efficiencies in the, in the structure of the building by using that hybrid system. We want the building to be a PCA A-grade building, um, which has a number of requirements that we have to meet. Um, we also want it to be competitive in its floor-to-floor -floor heights, so we want it to be quite a low structure to compete with traditional forms of construction. Um, so to do that, the, the hybrid system has to be quite clever, and it means that we have to get uh, all of the services in the building running through the steel members, and it's one of the main reasons why we're using steel. Um, but that allows the, the cassette system to then sit on top of that and span in quite a lightweight manner. Um, and obviously the cassette, system, um, is, uh, the cassette system lends itself to a very quick and, and fast direction on site, um, which is a positive for the builder. Uh, but it also allows post-fix uh, of all the services very quickly. Uh, it eliminates wet trades from the building. Uh, so it's got a lot of benefits um, for the contractor through the process. The main challenge for that one is it's a low cost, low rise suburban development uh, it's using low technology so it's a low temp VOV air conditioning system um, so there's nothing particularly, particularly high tech uh, in the building um, so getting that to work is actually a lot more complicated than doing a high tech building um, with timber because there's a lot more constraints on that. So that was probably the main challenge is trying to meet those PCA A grade requirements uh, and try and get the cost efficiencies through the structure whilst also keeping it low cost and, and low technology. Um, but the timber really helps with that um, because it eliminates those wet trades, because it's quick to erect on site. Um, so there's a lot of benefits there with the timber that are important. Um, well, it's obviously timber's a challenge because it's still very much in its infancy uh, in Australia. Uh, we're a long way behind Europe, um, who themselves I think are still very much in their infancy compared to traditional forms of construction. Um, so the industry's got a long way to go. Um, we think it's important that the knowledge of timber is out there and freely available. So we're doing a lot of research with the T Timber Development Association at the moment, um, putting together some studies and that will be freely available in the coming months. Um, so at the moment we're doing as much research as we can, going on field trips, um, studying timber, and obviously we're putting it forward on quite a number of jobs with clients as well. Um, so we'd like to see buildings get built in timber, we'd like to see multi-storey commercial buildings get built in particular. Uh, we know CLT has been proven in the residential market and that will continue to grow, um, but the commercial market really is the tough nut to crack. You definitely have to walk before you run and that's one of the reasons why we're looking at hybrid systems. Um, so trying to introduce timber, in timber into buildings, uh, get people used to how it works and some of the benefits and particularly the prefabrication aspect of it. Um, 
And once people start getting used to it as a material, it's only going to grow because there are so many benefits. I mean, the environmental benefits are obvious, um, but the accuracy of the fabrication off-site and the possibilities for prefabrication and the way that they're machined with quite high-end CNC machines, um, whether it's LVL, glue lamb, CLT, um, there's so many possibilities there. So I think the more that people start to understand those possibilities uh, and the more that the, the detailing and the knowledge of how to price it and how it works on site um, gets out there, um, it's only going to be used more and more. And we only need a few precedents really to start going up and people can walk through them um, and then they'll obviously start looking at adopting that in some of their buildings. I mean, I think that's where Forte has been really good in Melbourne in that, you know, it's been leading edge it's been, you know, very much led the way in Australia for CLT, but now people can actually walk through it, they can see it, they can touch it, they can see all the benefits, how it's been constructed, the knowledge base is there, and that's now being used as a precedent for multiple projects. And there's lots of people out there looking at CLT, and both from manufacturing in Australia and from the client and, and contractor side looking at it because of its benefits. So I think for commercial buildings and timber frame buildings, uh, it's got to go the same way. We need to see a few getting constructed and that, that knowledge base will then grow and people will be able to um, learn from that.